Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper from the upcoming ASPLOS conference. That's the conference on architectural support for programming languages and operating systems. And I thought this paper takes a look at a very interesting point in the design space for how software can use disaggregated memory. So let's talk a little bit about what disaggregated memory is what some of the current approaches to using it are and what the shortcomings of those approaches are and then what the authors are proposing in this paper that's new and different. Now, when you're trying to schedule workloads on machines in a large data center, you have to play this intricate game of three-dimensional Tetris where you need to find a machine with the right amount of CPU, RAM and storage to run your workload. And because this matching process is not perfect, you can have a lot of fragmentation and this results in a lot of wasted resources. And then some workloads are very skewed and end up wasting a machine that is heavy on other resources, but where they just need one resource. For example, a CPU light, but RAM heavy workload might tie up an entire machine just with RAM and leave a lot of CPU unused on it or vice versa. One way of getting around this elaborate bin fitting problem is to disaggregate resources. So instead of having all your machines have a lot of RAM and CPU and storage, have a set of machines that are heavy on CPU but light on the other resources, then have another set of machines that are meant to be storage machines. So they're heavy on storage and light on the other resources and what this paper is talking about have a third set of machines that are your RAM machines. So they're heavy on RAM, but light on the other resources. So this means that all your resources are disaggregated. You have a set of CPU heavy machines, a set of RAM heavy machines, and a set of storage heavy machines. To a large extent, this disaggregation has already played out in terms of CPU and storage. Almost all storage in modern data centers is remote and accessed over the network already. That still leaves RAM and CPU largely still coupled together. And as they point out over here, average data center memory utilization is pretty low at around only 65%. So we'd like to start being able to use disaggregated RAM and recent hardware advances like remote DMA have started to make that feasible. The open question still is what kind of abstractions operating systems and runtimes and applications can actually use to directly use remote RAM. The most prevalent technique for using disaggregated RAM so far has been to basically use an extension of the kernel's virtual memory mechanism. So you expand the virtual space for RAM out to include remote RAM as well. And when you access RAM that is not available locally, you use the virtual memory mechanisms to trigger a page fault. And this will go and fetch a page of remote RAM and then cache it locally on your local physical RAM. You can use the same virtual memory mechanisms for tracking dirty pages such that you can mark pages dirty when they are written and that will trigger a write back to the original store of RAM when they are evicted. The good thing about this technique is that virtual memory is a well understood technique, but also that it is totally transparent to the application. It is a kernel that deals with fetching pages over the network. The downsides are that this is high in overhead and so there is a significant hit to application level performance. One of the reasons this happens is that even if you want to access a small amount of data from remote RAM, the unit of memory that you can access is that of a page and pages are at least four kilobytes large or higher. This results in what they call dirty data amplification, where even if you want to read and write a small amount of RAM, say just a few bytes or a few hundreds of bytes, you fetch an entire page and then that entire page gets marked dirty and the authors measured dirty data amplification between 2 and 31x 
when using four kilobyte pages for some test applications. The central idea of this paper is to tackle accessing disaggregated RAM at a much lower level of abstraction and that level is the level of the CPU cache. So they're using cache coherence algorithms instead of virtual memory techniques for accessing remote disaggregated RAM. This also is transparent to the application However, this does need new hardware support at the microarchitecture level. But as they point out, they expect such hardware support to become available soon, especially with the adoption of CXL. And CXL is Compute Express Link, which is a new standard for high-speed device-to-device interconnects. This is a high-level sequence diagram of how you would access remote memory and it refers to pages but it can also be used for this particular system on a cache line basis note that in the case of the system described here which the authors call kona by the way you do not need to update page tables or invalidate tlbs because the pages exist in the same location and with the same permissions already and like i said before the central idea of this paper is that instead of tracking memory and dirty memory that has been written at the page level the authors here are proposing to do this at the cache line level which is much finer grained the overall system consists of several components we have a rack level controller which allocates disaggregated memory at a very coarse granularity across different machines on the rack. We have some coordination software that handles which machine is offering how much memory as disaggregated RAM. And finally, we have an application library which abstracts all the interactions with this controller level piece as well as with the memory servers and the new hardware primitives. Part of what this new library does is hook into malloc and mmap calls to make sure that there is enough RAM available in the disaggregated pool to service these requests. So what are the new hardware primitives that the authors are proposing? They need two new primitives, one which they call cache remote data identifies what data to fetch from remote memory and caches it locally. The other one is called track local data, which identifies data that has been written locally or that's dirty and needs to be written back. And finally, this is not necessary, but can be used for better performance. You could also have a copy data dirty primitive. The authors built a reference architecture with these primitives using FPGAs that was attached to a regular CPU. And they were able to essentially emulate this cache coherence algorithm that uses remote memory using an FPGA interconnect. Both the CPU and the FPGA had their own local DRAM, but the FPGA also exposed physical memory that was backed by remote memory. The hope is that ultimately all of this will simply get subsumed into the CPU microarchitecture itself. And it sounds like with the Compute Express Link initiative that might be happening soon. The authors present a lot of fine-grained benchmarks in the paper and I'd encourage you to take a look at them. But just to summarize, what they found was that using cache coherence instead of virtual memory improved average memory access time by about 1.7 to 5x and reduced dirty data amplification by about 2 to 10x. This again is compared to the virtual memory page level approach to using disaggregated RAM. So that was a quick look at a new interesting point in the design space for how to use disaggregated memory. I've done a couple of other papers that cover the idea of disaggregated resources and I'll link them below. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.